Hi everyone and welcome back to the FantasyFootballFix.com YouTube channel with me, Tom Campbell, for another Elite 11 team reveal ahead of blank game week 29, guys. Now we have got timestamps on the video. If you do want to hop around this week, we are going to be taking a look at the ideal, optimal free hit team ahead of double game week or blank game week, excuse me, guys, uh, 29. And we've got Mark Mansfield on the channel to talk us through all of his thoughts. He's having another amazing season, guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Guys, welcome back to the channel. And Mark, welcome back, my friend. Look at that overall rank. You're flying up into the top 30k. How's this season panning out for you, mate? Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, the, the line is going upwards a little bit now. So things have played out pretty well over the last few weeks. Um, taking, taking quite a few hits. Okay. Um, for different reasons. And, you know, the line's going up for now. But <laughs> I think we all know that can turn around pretty quick. Um, it, can, it can mate yeah oh, that's interesting around the hits then that's something that sort of the elite managers i've talked around and uh sort of transfer strategies that we've talked around throughout the last couple of years on the channel is that something that you would typically avoid or are you pretty relaxed about taking hits and it's purely situational and you're you know comfortable taking them strategically yeah i'm always quite happy to take a few hits um i've taken three minus fours in the last three weeks and i've taken three minus fours in the whole previous part of the season mm. but that's mainly due to a combination of a a lot of injuries i picked up five injuries i think in in under in 13 days um wow and then when you get into doubles and that you're probably taking a few more hits just to navigate around things because it feels like you're kind of picking your way through a minefield over the last few weeks yeah so it's easier to make the, the minus fours work than it is in regular evenly spaced weeks i see yeah, interesting. I just wonder around the um, when you get to the end of the season, do you do you have a view on how many sort of transfers typically you, you will have made, Mark? Is that something you um, orientate around, or are you actually it doesn't actually interest you? It's not the type of Sky Fantasy Football one transfer per week and or, or, orientating around that kind of 38, 39, 40 transfers, or are you kind of not bothered and situation just dictates how many you need to take on no. any given game week? Yeah, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't really have any kind of number in my head of the, no. the number of hits that I typically take. Um mm -hmm. yeah, I think if you don't if you don't need to make any, it's oh. probably better, but um desperate times sometimes call for desperate <laughs> measures. So Don't I know it. Yeah, don't I know it, definitely. And, uh, what? As you get through the season, what I was gonna say is as you get through the season, depending on what you want to achieve, maybe you have to be a little bit more aggressive and take yeah. more hits. Um so I wouldn't be too dogmatic about it, you know. If you need tickets, take them. Yeah, I get it, mate. I get it. Well, well yeah, it's a beautiful upward trend on the uh, on the graph that we can see. And like I said, 2024, it's been the year of the elite manager coming on this channel and coming on this series. And we're seeing nothing but nothing but great performances. Craig will get you on and you can talk to us about how that's working out for you in a, in a few game weeks' time, I assure you, mate. But we can see right now that you've got the free hit chip uh, active for game week 29. So in this week's video, guys, we will be going through that, that team that... Um, Mark's looking to to create and we'll give some advice around that and we have got some interesting midfielder options um, as well but in terms of what happened ahead of game week 28 um, Mark and we will take a look at your points in just a few moments time did you have any thoughts around avoiding the free hit or was this a strategy that you had in place for a long time and actually your transfers were set around the policy of using this chip in game week 29 how did that work out for you? Um, I, I'm, this has not worked out the way I wanted it to work out. I'm generally against using the free hit in this game week. You know, we have this game week every season. I'm usually against it, and I'd usually prefer just to write it out. But um, with the, I, I was okay. I was close to being fine, I think, for this. But then with the Richardson injury, that I think a lot of people were very borderline, and Richardson getting injured kind of tipped it over the edge, where it made a little bit more sense maybe to free hit this week, and. You know, the main reason for doing it, I, I don't think, is the opportunity of 29 um, in and of itself. It's rather not bending your team too far out of shape and maybe pushing the wild card that a little bit further out. Um, I so I think most people, broadly speaking, there are two strategies. Either you don't free hit this week and you kind of load up on Luton maybe and then you wild card shortly afterwards. Or else you do free hit and you can push your wild card maybe out to 34 or 35. Mm -hmm. and try and take better advantage of the game week 37 bench boost so i was against it 
then Richardson got injured and I decided I'd, I'd just go for it. I sold yeah. Rich Charlison, I sold Charlie Taylor, and then I was getting really low on numbers. So I just committed it to it that week. I see. Yeah, interesting how the plans can change when, you know, situation mm. outside of your control kind of force your hands. You talked a little bit there about season uh, aspirations. And Mark, so right now sitting proudly inside that top 30K, what's going to represent a, a good good season for you, Mark? Is it top 10K or are you looking more uh, more than that? Yeah, I mean, I've had a good run, so I'm kind of constantly reevaluating that every week. Mm. I think um, I'd have to aim for top 10K now, hmm. but oh, yeah. like this represents, 28 represents an improvement on 33 last season. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I'd aim for 10K. Like I'm in a situation now where if I could keep this level for the next few weeks, I'd probably get really aggressive towards the end to push, see what I could do and not yeah. worry so much about, you know, drifting out a bit okay so it's it's kind of you, you're just trying to stay steady at the moment and yeah. limit your risk in general and just try and creep up 5k every two weeks and maybe if you get up around fifteen thousand with two or three weeks to go you can really go bananas and start yeah. hitting the hell out of everything in the hopes of getting into the top 10 I like yeah. it interesting way of going about it well let's see how that plays out man i'm sure we'll get you back on the channel before the season's finished but um let's take a look at how your game week 28 team has done so far obviously we are recording ahead of the game week completing guys but let's take a look at how the points have played out so far for mark's team in blank game week or excuse me in game week 28 Okay, guys, so we are recording. We're still just that one game to to play out in uh, game week 28. But this is how you arrived. We can see that beautiful zero point of the bagel for Solanke with captaincy, which I'm sure is pretty much ubiquitous <laughs> ac- across us all. So we don't need to talk too much uh, around around that one. But I want to get straight into this Arsenal defender looking back at me with 11 points. Mark, we've talked around the Arsenal defence amongst all the elite managers over the course of this series and their great underlying numbers. Corey's been on that wagon for a long time. What compelled you to get him ahead of Saliba, mate? I, I'm, I'm here applauding. Talk to me around what, what prompted that that choice. Uh, yeah. It's a funny one because I just had, I really, coming up to the you know Sheffield United game, I was really hell-bent on getting an Arsenal defender and it never really occurred to me to get Saliba. Um, I, I was always exactly. after White. Um, so I was very jealous of everyone having two Arsenal defenders. And, oh, yeah. you know, there were games like the Newcastle game where I really got away with it. You know, like that was definitely a clean sheet. Mm-hmm. So when you see when you see Sheffield United coming up, you think, can I engineer a free move here? You know, that White will get the clean sheet, the guy that I'm getting rid of doesn't, and I've just, you know, got a free defensive upgrade. <laughs> um, so the reason I got White was... Um, earlier in the season people loaded up on Trippier coming into a Sheffield United game it was Sheffield United away yeah. and I think he had Burnley around that time in Brentford and it was kind of the same principle here um, people went for Saliba first of all I think because he was top of the charts so you know and he was cheaper than White for a long period and I mm-hmm. think people kind of went there without thinking too much mm-hmm. Uh, maybe some perceived, you know, a minutes risk. I, I think we should think of minutes for defenders slightly different than attackers. Um, with defenders, I think you're really more concerned with expected starts rather than expected minutes mm-hmm. because there's a sweet spot where they come off early and they so they have less minutes but are less likely to concede. So it's mm-hmm. not exactly the same proportion. It's not the I same see. relationship as you have for a forward where you want yeah. them on until the 90th minute. Like we saw Son scoring in junk time um, on Sunday. Mm. So, and then, you know, I think if you watch Arsenal, you see where White is on the pitch. Mm. And then in games where they're going to dominate possession, you think he's going to be in and around the box. So mm-hmm. when you see that, now I'm not saying like there was this compelling statistical reason to get him, but he was such a differential that, you know, there was never really any question I was going to get Saliba um, because all I was doing was catching up on everyone else. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah. So what, what was that doing for me? Like all the other guys in the Elite 11 League had two Arsenal defenders and I'm just mm-hmm. going to spend the transfer catching up to them. Mm-hmm. So you just go for the differential. And 
look, he got unlucky the last day. If Ramsdale hadn't made that mistake, he would have had another four points. So I've like... kind of been, I kind of been unlucky if 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 we want to look at it in a certain mm-hmm. way here. Mm-hmm. I'm not um, sure Corey's sure. going to agree, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, mm-hmm. you've got to. It is the I'm I'm a glass half empty kind of guy. That should <laughs> think, be. Yeah, I think every. It should be fifteen managers. points for White. Yeah. Every, every every FPL manager is a glass half empty, guys. You could get yeah, but you could get you could get a game, game week rank of two, two in the world, yeah, and people yeah, would yeah. be annoyed that it wasn't one. And that, yeah, definitely, Look, it's a great choice, mate. It's worked out handsomely for you. I love that analysis there that you provided in relation to the expected starts for defenders. That's definitely food for thought down the stretch. So it's got a minus four here, Mark, ahead of game week twenty eight. What was the transfers that you made that that went into this? Was that the Injury prompted strategy or reaction no, no, rather, this, or was this this was a plan? No, move? this is this was more strategic. So go on. The first transfer that I'm not going to call the minus four was um, Estepinian to Zabarni, and that hasn't worked out well, obviously. And I don't care even in the slightest because Estepinian's gone. I'm glad to see the back of him. He's the worst <laughs> transfer I've made in many years. I <laughs> gladly pay a transfer to get that stripy sh- blue fellow sh- out of my team. Mm-hmm. Uh, disgusting. Um, so that was the Barnian. I think it makes sense. Like I needed a defender for thirty because I've got Aki there. Uh, I've got the two Arsenal boys, and I want to minimise the number of those I play. Yeah. Um, I think Karakesh was the flavour of the month on Friday, flavour of the day on Friday. Um, but I just wanted minutes guarantee. And looking at Karakesh's history, his minutes have not been good. No. Um, so. You know, if you're going to wildcard in 30, 31, fine. But me hoping to wildcard in 34, 35, yeah, had to take Zabarni. So that was the first transfer. Yeah. And then sense. the netto was the minus four. And that was, was it wise? I don't know. Um. So what I was thinking was, again, if I'm going to go till 35, I'm far better off having netto in goal than um, Dubravka. Yeah. That's who oh, you replaced. Yeah. And the pain point here was benching Areola, but no it was a there, big man. risk. Yeah, yeah, it was a big risk, but I think obviously the Burnley fixture was there, and I didn't want to let Areola's kind of anomalous haul the previous week influence me. Like they didn't keep a clean sheet. Everton could have scored more. They really? played on Thursday night. Yeah. I always thought Burnley can do something, so. I went ahead with it. I'm three points down. If Nato gets two points on tomorrow, I'm happy to pay one point for that upgrade. So it's definitely. it's okay. Yeah, man, definitely. Ariola, I mean, as a West Ham fan who's watched the majority of their games, yeah, no qualms about that at all. Totally agree with your, your assessment there. He's a good goalkeeper, but we're not a good defensive yeah. team. So no no qualms there at all. neto has got good fixtures, doesn't he, for a, a period there, especially if you're going to be you know, looking at fixtures beyond, you know, when you return back from the game week 29 free hit team as well. So, no. Yeah, he's got Everton. Um, I think, and he he was close. He, think If that game had ended differently, he could have got maybe five points because mm-hmm. I think if he got one or two more save points, that would have upped him in the bonus. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not spectacular, but it was a strategic thing and I think it's okay as a minus four. Yeah, no, agree with that. I mean, that looking through that midfield um, Mark, I, I, I guess there's probably not many questions in the, the forefront of my mind. There was some talk around Phil Foden not just being benched, but his like his 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 kind of his worth ongoing. It seemed crazy to me the form that he was in and 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 how yeah. well he's been playing. Were you of a similar mind? Were you, did you ever entertain the thought of not starting Phil Foden in in that away match at Anfield? No, I couldn't make a good case for selling or benching. And mm. to be honest, he's um, he's on a different level now. You know, he's he's the top city midfielder. I think. Oh yeah. In terms of selection, he's he's the most sure. He's got the best minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that was another factor that played into me free hitting in twenty nine. I was thinking like, if I'm going to buy some players for twenty nine, mm-hmm. you know, people are buying Barkley and players like that. Fine. Um, who am I selling here? Yeah. That I don't want to buy back and. You know, that is 80% of a good midfield, and I don't need each end. So that was another factor in, in free hitting 29. I don't want to sell it either. any of those four guys until Salah is back in the game. Yeah, yeah, no, I see. Just a word on Cole Palmer as well. Obviously, some conversation on our 
Slack channel around the elite managers and and just how good an option he's become, a midfielder he is as well. Uh, Mark, I mean, just looking ahead into next season, where are you seeing that price point coming in at? Let's say he remains at at Chelsea and no reason to think that he wouldn't. Priced so cheaply, obviously, with the transfer that took place this season. What sort of price would appeal to you next season, do you think? He's been amazing, obviously, with that price point this season, but to keep you interested for next season, what would you want him starting the, the season at next next time out? I think he'd, he'd probably be 8.5, maybe. Mm. Seems mm. reasonable, doesn't it? I agree. Um, it's, it's a big haul. It's a big old increase, isn't it? It's looking sort of Saka level. Still yeah, yeah. We, we've seen it before, though, where people go, that's a lot of money, and then, you know, you get seven weeks into the season and people are paying it because... Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's worth it. Like he's just the boss, you know. His attitude, his, his demeanor on the pitch, like he's the man, and he, he knows is, it. Yeah. And he's he just takes responsibility for everything. Yeah. Um, and then he's just got the ability to match that confidence, yeah. which is you know these are elite attributes. Yeah. At, at twenty years old, I think he's twenty. Is he twenty? Twenty one? I don't know. He's a boy. Yeah, it's, it's around. Yeah, that it's, short, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy what he's doing there. He's just come into a club, a big club, and just taken it and made it his own um, yeah, yeah. and you had other guys like Sterling and Kunku Enzo Fernandez these should have been the bosses and he's gone in there and he's the he's the big boy yeah 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 he's been he's been amazing I agree I mm. wouldn't be surprised me to see him in that kind of eight eight point five million next season and people pay it and be well yeah, yeah. recommended to do so yeah all right cool I don't think we need to talk around Harland Watkins and of course Dominic Solanke and the you know the unfortunate zero point with the with the missed penalty yeah, the VAR ruled out goal. We all know it's old hat now and he's got another chance. So we'll see how he gets on this time out. And uh, I'm sure lots of people watching will be hoping that he, of course, does well. But we want to move on and take a look at game week 29, Mark. So the way that we're going to do this is you've selected some midfielder options and we're going to take a look at those in a moment before we then take a look at how your recommended free hit team looks for blank game week 29. But let's start with the midfielder selections. Okay, guys, so uh, always interesting to see some West Ham colours on any of our graphics. It's pretty rare, as you can imagine, over the course of the season. But we wanted to talk around some midfielder options. Obviously, money's not going to be a problem in this free hit selection. I suspect we'll end up with a massive surplus with everybody that you could possibly want in your Game Week 29 teams. But we wanted to talk around some of the kind of best midfielder options. And we pulled out four players here, Mark, um, Douglas Louise. uh, Paqueta of West Ham, Kulisevsky and Brennan Johnson from Tottenham. And the highlight the numbers in green there are where Fancy Football Fix is sort of recommending the quote-unquote best options. Do you want to talk through your kind of thought processes around these four, Mark, and who's sort of standing out to you and what you'd kind of recommend? Like I say, money's not an issue here at all in terms of selection. Who's Who's standing out to you? Yeah, I guess these are guys that are you know, fringe picks for people, they're probably going to be the eighth attacking pick. Um, is that possible? Seventh attacking pick, I think, Seventh, is yeah. actually mathematically more mm-hmm. correct. And so, you know, I there are obvious picks that aren't here, like yeah. Son, Son Madison, yeah. So these are guys that are maybes. Um, so I'm... One of the things that's in my uh, mind coming into this week is do we play um, penalty lottery? Um, given okay. the absolute mess of refereeing we've experienced for a long time now, mm. do should we be going for guys who are penalty takers and just hope you get one of these, you know, games which seem to be seems to be penalty in half of games now, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the main reason for getting Douglas Louise. Mm. Um, and there are questions over Villa after the weekend. They lost Kamara a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now McGinn is going to be gone. Yeah. So what does that do to the midfield? What does it do to where Luis is? Mm-hmm. And I think if you get Douglas Luis, notwithstanding what he did two weeks ago, which was score two goals from open play, I think you are mainly relying on penalties here. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure that's my game. Um, I'm not sure I'll go that way. Yeah. And they're away from home, Mark, as well. They also do play Thursday night, don't they, as well? I appreciate the team that yeah. they're playing also play Thursday night, but I do wonder if that Thursday-Sunday thing is starting to take a bit of a toll on them as well it was it seemed apparent to me last time that they played at that you know they they competed against Tottenham it it seemed to be having a bit of an, an impact on them and that was you know before they take out 
McGinn, who's pretty talismanic for them in their midfield. Yeah, yeah, I, I do wonder about the impact that um, the Thursday night games have on mm. clubs that have less depth. Yeah, um, West Ham handled it obviously very well to become world champions last season, but I guess. <laughs> I guess there was some compensation made in the league there. And oh yeah, we were we sucked in the league. You're right. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, I'm not sure whether you know the fix um, model predictions take mm -hmm. turnaround between games into account. Mm -hmm. But it's one of these things that I would really think you know think about a lot is. Can a team get back up for a game on a Sunday when they've been off in Eastern Europe on a Thursday? Hmm. Like it's not easy. No. Um, so I'd have reservations around Villa, Douglas Louise for all those reasons. Then okay. Pekita, you'll probably be able to talk more about him. I think what's going to drive his um, adoption going into this free hit, people will make up a story that he's on penalties, I think. And it'll be driven partly off the fact that he's taken one before and mm -hmm. Ward Prowse came off early at the weekend. Mm -hmm. But when I think you multiply out the, you know, maybe they'll get a penalty, maybe he's on them, <laughs> and you get, you're, you start, you know, multiplying out the maybes, you're, the probability of this actually happening goes down a lot. That's a good point. Yeah, definitely. Um, if there was, if this is a free hit where you wanted to fit in three or four premiums, I think the cat at six million would be right up there. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to. We can have the 11 most expensive players here and still have loads of money over. Yeah. So yeah, I think you you'd probably be able to talk about Takeda better than me. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't expand. An yeah, I wouldn't expand too much on that. I think the question mark over penalties is just that a question mark. My gut still says that I'd see Ward Prowse prefer them, but it's marginal, and I could definitely be wrong about that. I guess that just calls into the question: if you don't know, and you're not inclined to get both of them, does it become even a factor that you should acknowledge? I'd say probably not. So mm. I just wonder whether or not it's more around instead of the Lewis uh, the the Paqueta discussion. You mentioned you know the the Thursday night thing. These teams play one another. Do we see that then being kind of a a game with minimal chances, or do you think actually the defenses just won't concentrate, and actually there could be loads of horrible errors that lead to lead to chances for the for the attacking players? I guess it's a difficult one to to predict in that respect. Yeah, I think that's a lot of you know what this free hit is going to be about is people making calls on matches. Um, and you know, maybe one of the calls is that we find that West Ham and uh, Villa is just a bit flat. Yeah, maybe. I could see it. I personally could see it, you know. And one other thing that maybe acts against Paqueta is um, I think most people will have Bowen. Yeah. And do you For want sure. to have, do you want to back the West Ham horse to that degree? Probably not. Hell no. I don't. I would never recommend that. I love us. I want us to do well. Would I recommend it? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Let's move on. The the Spurs boys. Then you've you've called out two there. We've got the the winger Kulusevski, and then uh, Brandon Johnson, who's been playing more through the middle. I guess you mentioned Richarlison's injury as well. How are you reading this Tottenham contingent? Mark? Yeah. Um. I don't think many people will go for Kulusevski, but he can pop up with you know fifteen, sixteen points quite That's easily. Good point. mm Hmm. But uh, I don't think he captures people's imagination to to a great degree. And he's not like the recency bias isn't there. He hasn't done a whole lot recently. Um, I think people, I think Johnson is, is a good shout maybe um, if you're not concerned about his game time for one week. Mm. I think he's a good shout because, you know, you've, we can all picture in our minds Tottenham getting a run on someone. And as we saw on Sunday, you've got like, three forwards they're running away from each other and you know there's going to be chances um you know it's 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 one of those ones where maybe you want to get a Tottenham forward to accompany Son because Son on his own isn't going to do much for you this week um he's probably going to be up around what I guess 120 percent effective ownership oh yeah for sure definitely um yeah, it's an interesting one. So, is, yeah. is, that, is, is your recommendation, and we will come on and have a look at the team in a minute, try not to give too many spoilers for that, Mark, but would you say that the, the, if you're going to treble up on Spurs, which I'm sure is the recommendation, that you'd say treble attack is actually viable with, say, Madison Son plus one of these boys? Or would you say actually, you know, Pedro Porro or maybe Vicario in goal, something like that, and actually yeah. a defensive option is preferred? What's How do you read the kind of Spurs' best optimal triple up? 
Uh, probably the triple up in attack is a step okay. too far because oh. you expose yourself to uh, a Leno masterclass or something mm. and Fulham shut them out and your your free hit is kind of sunk. Um, yeah. So I, I think what you said there about Vicario is interesting. You know, mm. the, the goalkeeper situation is not good here in no. this free hit. And a lot of people will be on Paro uh, with good reason. Yeah. But I like Vicario. I think he's... he's yeah. possibly going to haul kind of idea. So um, at the moment, I have Madison. I'm very template here in terms of free hit 29, as I always am. I have mm-hmm. Madison, Paro, and Son. Right. Um, I, I'm not sure about Madison. Um, maybe you could, because what will happen here is people are going to think Madison is in the best free hit team, but you can go for a real differential here. Mm-hmm. And Madison's not going to damage it that much, I think. You know, mm-hmm. in terms of if he does well and you don't have him, mm-hmm. okay. You know, you lost an opportunity. But maybe if you get Johnson and he gets two goals, like you're on this 2% player again, like White is for me now. If you can get a 2% differential, like you're just, you're a rocket. I love um, it. I love that thought pro, that risk reward type approach, Martin. That's really interesting. I All talk right, a could... big game, Tom. I talk a big game. Watch you me do. chicken out. And get you, Madison. You, you, you talk a big <laughs> game. You, the chickening out may or may not happen, but you're sitting there with an overall rank in the top thirty thousand. So you know, crack on. All right. Well, you failed the brief of not giving any spoilers, but I won't tick you off too much. So well, let's move on before you give anything else away and take a look at your free hit team for blank game week twenty nine. <laughs> Okay, guys, so we've got a few names there that we've just mentioned. We probably don't need to talk around the the Spurs guys any longer. You've got Pedro Porro, you've got James Madison there, and Captain Hyung Sun Min, of course, sitting there in the midfield. But there's some funky old names here for this free hit team. All right, let's start with the, the defence then. You mentioned goalkeeper as well. Not great options, are they, for this game week at all? No one really wow. stood out to me. And if you're looking to flacken, then that sort of tells that story, right? That wouldn't be a selection that presumably is giving you much in the way of confidence, Mark, right? Yeah, I, I can't imagine I'll end up on Fleck and it's just um, so uninspiring. Mm. The, I think the the issue you have here is, um, well, I have is I probably don't want to back, I don't want to have defence against attack too much. Um, and I think, you know, there's eight goalkeepers we can pick from here. Like Trafford's not on the menu at all. Mm. Um, I don't want to get Kaminsky because I have Doughty. I'm not getting a Forest guy. Um, I don't want to put Leno against Spurs because I'm going to have double Spurs attack. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just not getting Ariola. And maybe a good one is Martinez as well. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely could see him keeping a clean sheet for sure. Yeah. yeah might he might be like the kind of sneaky one in there because, mm-hmm. as you can see, I've got Kansa and. Mm-hmm. This just leaves me totally like flat as a pick. Mm. I just, I just, no, I no interest in really doing that. Other than who else do you pick? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that there's many compelling cases, Mark, and that sort of prompts a question. I wasn't going to get onto it straight away, but it's sort of the conversation's going there. So I look at this team, right, and I'd agree you could make a case to say it's the optimal template team, right, and I, I think that's probably what you'd what you'd say to me i'm just wondering am i naive to look at this and think there's not a lot of points here right i wouldn't expect this team to be you know a a hundred point game week team right i know it can happen of course with any given game week but in terms of your expectations it feels like a low scoring week to me as a as a person observing this team if you agree with that would you then say that actually if you had, say, the core players of this in your pre Game Week 29 team, would you be okay with like rocking in with, say, five, maybe six players and saving that precious free hit chip? Or is that just really naive? Um, no, I don't think it's naive. I think it's, it's quite like it's a reasonable position that you're taking there as, you know, part in devil's advocacy, I, I guess. Um, mm. But for me, this got to a point where I didn't really see the upside in 34. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and here I just knew I couldn't mess this up. Like, there's no way you can mess up this free hit for people, I think, unless you, you told Captain Son or you don't get one of the main guys. But I think it's a it's one of those ones where yeah, if you don't have if you don't have Madison or you don't have Son, yeah, take a minus four to get there. If you don't have Bowen, maybe you take a minus four to get him. Mm-hmm. And I guess your question is around how many times do you do that? Yeah, uh, exactly. So say if you had Son, Bowen, Watkins in your team and, and maybe Poro or Tony, and then you had a free transfer, to me that that might present a case for, that it's enough. I Maybe I'm not phrasing yeah. the question well enough. No, I know. Yeah, you are. No, that's fine. Um, I think you'd, you know, you can take minus fours to get people like maybe Tony, Son, Madison, if you see a future for them in your team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, see. I think if you're wild carding in 30, I probably won't go beyond four or eight, minus four, minus eight. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's fair. There's a little bit of an investment there. It makes more sense. So yeah. I, I don't think I'd go beyond myself. I would have a mental block, I think, about going beyond eight probably because mm-hmm. this could end up as a 30-point game week. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm sort of saying. If it's a 30, 35, 40-point game week, you know, is that worth an investment of a free hit chip? And I've gone back and forth, and I suspect people watching will be thinking yeah. the same when they look at their team and see, say, maybe three or four players in their team if without any free transfers, I just wonder if you can get to the core players in, in a minus four, maybe even a minus eight. Do you do that? Something else I was thinking about, Mark, as well, is you mentioned the sort of defender. Do you think about it's, it's there's a sort of risk-reward strategy? You're a great overall rank. But would you ever sort of say, well, I'm going to take a flyer here and say I'm going to back, say, Nottingham Forest to keep Luton out and go treble up on defence and actually gamble the free hit that way do you think that that's too hail mary or do you think there's some some benefit or merit in 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 deploying that type of approach it it depends on where your rank is really doesn't it if you're not happy with your rank yeah you need to do something pretty out there to get back in where you want to be mm-hmm. now, i think if your rank is better like at, at my rank this is very much a do no harm yeah. free hit boring attitude that is but like the worst thing here would be to try and do something maverick and people who don't free hit come out better than you. So you think, okay, I'm going to captain, um, you know, I'm going to captain Christopher Iyer from Brentford mm-hmm. and everyone else who's not on free hit captain son, he so gets a hat trick. Yeah. So the first thing here is like, just don't wet the bed <laughs> yeah. and, you know, get Bowen, get son, get Tony yeah. Watkins and, Try and make yeah. yeah, you're you're gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. But then then you start thinking like, okay, it seems to me and everyone, all the commentators out there, that Madison has to be in the three hit. But like why not take on a little bit more risk with Johnson, for example? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that shout that you talked about in the previous slide as well. Can um, I ask ask you about around the forwards? Is I, I was expecting to see Munez apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly, the Fulham striker who's he's been playing well recently mentioned is the fact that he's missed out for for morris purely down to the fact that you're expecting to start pedro porro or do you actually see morris as a, a more compelling choice anyway um yeah morris is just hanging in there by his fingernails i'd say let's see how he goes tomorrow um if you know if, i love my head will obviously be turned if he scores twice tomorrow yeah but definitely. he's uh i'm not sure about him he he could be a fifth midfielder mm-hmm. um i don't think i'd take munas over him no um Mainly because I've been paying zero attention to Fulham <laughs> in this Fair game. Enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I just don't know a lot about the guy. I know he's no. scored goals and he's got some assists, but at least I know I'm getting with Tony and Armaris and I'm with getting Morris, penalties yeah. and I'm getting 90 minutes probably. Yeah, and you don't have that, you know, opposing situation you talked around with the attacks versus your own defenders, which is always something you want to avoid, yeah, yeah, particularly yeah. on a free hit, right? Yeah, I see. I think there are a couple of more interesting attackers than Minos. Maybe Chris Wood can be very interesting. That's true. He's back in contention now, isn't he? Yeah, that's good. Point. Yeah. When I threw this together first, I had Wissa in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, player I was expecting to see as well. He played well in the last game as well. Hmm. So, like, there, I think everyone is going to be talking about which fifth midfielder they'll get. But maybe, you know, maybe we should think a little bit more about Wissa and Wood. 
and Munoz. And th- there's probably, you know, an argument to be made for maybe Tony is the player yeah. that you bat against. Because he's, again, like I was saying at Madison, yeah, the, lot, the free hit teams are all going to have him. But mm-hmm. overall, in terms of the game, maybe you can bet against Tony. Maybe you can bet against Madison. Mm-hmm. If you want to do a differential free hit, but like don't bet against Son, don't get a bet against Watkins, Bowen. Yeah. Because no. you don't want to get caught out by non free hitters just because you're trying to be smart. Yeah, that risk versus reward, there's an element of unnecessary risk, isn't there? And the players that you're mentioning yeah. there, there's no reason to, to back against them, is there? Definitely. Uh, just yeah. one final question. You've got Bailey from from Villa here in, in the midfield, He's obviously had a great season as well. He wasn't a player that we, we, we referred to on the last um, slide, Mark. Is he a nailed-on selection into this midfield? Have you been really impressed with him and, and see him as a kind of must-have in, inclusion in, in a free-hit team, or are you a little little cooler on him? I don't see him as must-have, but I think he would be higher in the rankings than any of the guys on the previous slide. Mm. Um, but I've always had a soft spot for, for Bailey. Just mm. I think he's, really, he's a... He can have really good days. I had him twice last season. Didn't go well either time. But um, I remember that. Yeah. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I like. I need to get my head into this space later in the week when mm-hmm. we've seen the Thursday games because yeah. you know if if Ollie Watkins or Son, what free haters are hoping for right now is you know Doughty or Son or Watkins catches a very very mild cold. That rules them out for one game. Not mm-hmm. wishing ill upon anyone, but mm-hmm. if that happens, then the wheels come off the non-free hit teams. Um, yeah. So, a little kick in the ankle for Watkins. You know. Yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm not wishing ill on anyone here, but no, I am. It's fine as long as it's nothing terminal. You know, let's 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 do it. Let's let's get on. Yeah. Free, free and teams optimal. Then you might see a free hit avalanche if yeah. something like that happens, and then it gets interesting. It but, does. I, I think there's plenty of differentials to take. People are going to say, oh, all the free hits are the same. They don't have to be if you don't want them to be. Mm-hmm. I I kind of just want to guarantee a green arrow here. That's all yeah. I really want to get out of this. I get it, mate. Definitely. And again, with your rank, I understand it completely. All right, mate. That's all of my questions. So no further questions, uh, Your Honour. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up before we wrap things up? Any particular YouTube channel you might want to mention or anything in that space? Yeah, I just mentioned on the, the last video that I've been making a few uh, hobby YouTube videos on a channel called FPL Takes. I'll probably take a week off and point everyone towards this wonderful video instead. Um, but yeah, check it out if you want. It's uh, just a little bit of uh, spare time hobby that I've been doing. Definitely. I will pop a link to Mark's channel in the video description, guys. So do please head on over and give him a subscribe as well. And of course, smash a like on a video on your way out as well. And do please also head over to fancyfootballfix.com if you haven't already done so and get your push notifications enabled for all of our elite managers. We're going to see who finally comes out on top. Mark's sitting in third this season at the current time and see whether or not he can push on and get to the top of the rankings who would dare bet against him with a free hit team like that guys do please uh, enjoy the rest of your week and i will be back with you next week to talk through the wreckage of blank game week 29 take care bye bye